Hello friends, we are learning how to delete an element from a heap. In the last tutorial, I explained the procedure of heap deletion as well as how to adjust the heap after copying the content of the last heap element into the root. In this tutorial, we are going to understand the algorithm more clearly for both heap deletion and adjust operation with visualization side by side using an example. You can see the example heap tree on the right hand side of the screen also the actual representation of the same heap in one dimensional array at the top. The heap delete algorithm is visible on the left side of the screen. The heap delete procedure receives the reference to the 1D array in which the heap is maintained along with the reference of the heap size. At the beginning, we check if the heap is empty or not just by comparing the heap size with zero. If the heap size is zero, indeed, then the heap is empty. We are returning from this procedure in that case as we don't have anything to delete. Otherwise, we take out the content of the root that is content of index 1 in a variable item. For this example, root content is 90 and we assign that to a variable named item. Now we copy the content of the last element that is 45 to root that is to index 1 and then we reduce the size of heap by 1 to practically delete one element from the array. Now, after copying the last element into the root of the heap, uh, the heap may no longer be heap at index 1. We can see that the max heap is definitely maintained at index 2 and also at index 3, but it may not be maintained at index 1. To be general, a max heap is not maintained at index i equals 1. However, the max heap is well maintained at 2 times i and 2 times i plus 1. That is, both the children of index i is indeed max heap. Now, as I said in the last tutorial, we need to adjust the index i so that the max heap is maintained at index i. And for that, we need to call the adjust operation and pass the array reference, index 1, and the total number of elements in the heap. The index 1 is passed to let the adjust operation know that at what index it should adjust. Adjust is going to restore the heap by placing the next largest number at the root. When the heap is adjusted, we return the item that is 90 for this example to the caller. Now let's look into the adjust operation. Here we go. Here is the adjust routine. For this example, i is 1, n is 9. Adjust operation assigns the content of the index that it will adjust into a variable temp. You can see that adjust will adjust at index i equals 1. So it gets the content of index 1, that is 45, into a variable temp. j is initialized with the index of let child of i, that is 2. Now, the while loop will iterate as long as j is less than equals n, that is, as long as j is a valid index. j is right now 2, and 2 less than equals 9. That is indeed true. Hence, we come inside of the while loop. Now we check if the node at index j has a sibling or not. We know that the index of sibling is one more than the index of the left child. Since j is the left child's index, so j plus 1, that's 3, is the index for the sibling of current j. And that exists as j less than n. Uh, because j is 2, and n is 9. So obviously 2 plus 1, 3 that exist. So j less than n is true for the current situation. So j has a sibling. Since the sibling exists and we compare the content of j with that of its sibling at j plus 1. That is with 80 and 65. 80 is larger than 65. So the condition a square bracket j less than a square bracket j plus 1 fails. Uh, because 80 less than 65 that is false and we keep j at index 2 so index j will remain always at the larger of two siblings now we compare the content of index j that is a subscript j with temp that is 45 is temp greater than equals aj that is 80 no it's not had it been true then we would break the loop as we found that the temp is larger than the largest of two siblings, so heap is maintained at index i. However, for the current situation, it's not. Therefore, we copy the content of index j 
to index j divided by 2 that is 80 is copied to index 1 as j is right now 2 so the parent of this current j is at j divided by 2 that's at index 1 so after this copy we update j with 2 times j that is j is moved to the left child now j is 4 and the sibling of j is 5 again we iterate back in the while loop j less than equals n yes j is 4 and n is 9 so we come inside the while again now we compare the content of j and j plus 1 now the content of j plus 1 is larger than that of j as j plus 1 contains 70 and at j we have 50 so we move j to index 5 now we compare the content of j with temp is 45 greater than 70 no it's not so we do not break the loop instead we copy 70 at j to index j divided by 2 that is at index 2 because j is 5 so 5 divided by 2 we take the float value obviously so 5 divided by 2 is 2 uh, so we copy 70 at index 2 and at the end of the iteration we update j again to its left child that is this time j is at 10 and we do not have any more element there at index 10 as the total number of elements in the heap is 9 hence the condition of while fails and we come out of the loop finally we are copying the temp that's 45 at index j by 2 remember that the current value of j is 10 so j divided by 2 is 5 so we copy 45 at index 5 and the heap has been restored so this is how we adjust the heap if you still have confusion understanding this concept then please review the lecture and manually do the deletion drill side by side doing a dry run can be best sometimes to understand the logics now let's estimate the worst case time complexity of heap delete the height of heap tree is log n right and at each level at each layer we are doing one comparison for adjusting the heap so for log n levels there are not more than log n comparisons so the worst case complexity for deleting an element from the heap is big o of log n so that's all for this lecture in the next lecture we are going to understand another interesting operation for heap typically it is called heapify operation that is used to build a heap from any arbitrary array so we'll look into that in the next lecture thank you for watching this